everyone, welcome to another After Effects APZ tip from Motionworks. My name is Jack Grundy, I'm a freelance motion graphics and visual effects artist based in Manchester in England. Um, I'm also a freelance and part-time lecturer teaching After Effects, uh, Final Cut and post-production techniques as well. And today we're going to cover the change colour and change to colour effects in After Effects. So what I've got here is a solid with a ramp effect applied to it that's been set to radial ramp and there will be another video that's going to show how the ramp effect works so I'm not going to go into that but I'm just going to use this as an example to show you how these effects work. So first of all I've gone into my effects and presets panel, type the word change and then hit space and what that does is it will bring up both of these effects for you to use. So I'm going to take the change colour effect and drop it onto my footage. And you can see all the effects controls here. So first of all, I'm going to choose a colour that I want to change. So I'm going to take the eyedropper and select a colour within my image. And then I'm going to use the hue transform to change the colour of those selected pixels. So what you can see here is that the pixels that I've selected it's now changing those to match the hue that I've designated in this hue transform. Hue just referring to the colour. So I can keep going and keep changing that. So I'm going to take it to a red. Next we've got the lightness transform. This is, can also be referred to as luminance. And what this will do is change the brightness of how this uh, change colour effect will affect your footage. So increasing it will take it to white, and decreasing it will take it down to black. So I'm just going to leave it on zero for now. The next option we've got is saturation, and this is the intensity of the colour. So by increasing this, it will make the colour more red, and by taking it down, it will remove the colour and make it a monochromatic image. I'm going to reset that as well. Below the change, the colour that we can select to change, we've got the match tolerance. And what this is doing is it's telling After Effects which colours that are similar to the ones that we've picked to include in our colour change. So the default is 15%. If we increase this, it will select more of the pixels. And if we decrease this, it will only select the ones that are the exact same value as the ones that we've selected. So setting this to 0% means that it will only select the colours that are exactly the same. Before I talk about the softness, I'm going to explain how this works. So what we've got is an option called Match Colours, and this is the way that After Effects will define the similar colours that you want to change. So by default it's set to use RGB, and by using the Info panel up in the top right hand corner, we can tell which of these pixels it's going to select. So if I hover my mouse over this line, you can see the, pic the um, RGB value of that pixel is demonstrated in the info box. And if I move around this circle that we can see, you'll notice that all of the pixels in that circle are exactly the same color value, and that's why we're only getting those selected. As we increase the tolerance, it will select a wider range allowing pixels with slightly different values to be included. We can also change this match colours to the hue, and hue referring to just the colour as a whole. So the whole image is blue, so it's selecting everything. We can also set this to chroma as well, which will select slightly more of the colours in the scene compared to RGB. Uh, we're not going to go too far into what the chroma does, but it's similar to saturation. So it's selecting the saturation of the colours. We can also invert the colour correction mat, colour correction mat being what we've selected, so that now it's selecting the pixels outside of this area, like so. Next we've got the match softness, and the softness is basically the feathering between the selected areas. So here we can see we've got a very sharp circle on the inside and on the outside and by increasing this, let's try and get it a little bit finer, 
you can see that it's actually trying to feather across the bands between the different color values. So obviously these blues around the outside were darker than the ones in the center. What it's doing is it's feathering between those different gradients. What we can also do is actually view what pixels we are affecting in our scene under this drop down box here. So at the minute it sets a corrected layer which is showing us our final result and if we go to color correction mask what it does is it shows you a black and white image of what pixels that you've selected. So white represents the ones that are all being selected, ones that are grey are slightly affected and ones that are black are not being affected at all. So if I take the match softness down to zero you can see this is defined very clearly. What I'm next going to show you is the change to color, change to color effect. Let me just uh, turn off the change color effect. This works in a very similar way except it allows you to define the exact color that you want to change something to. So here I'm going to use the eyedropper for the from and select the color and then I'm going to go into the to option and actually manually select a different color changing this to a red once again. You can also sample a different color in your scene to actually try and make whatever it is that you're changing to match the color of that item in your footage. We can decide what we're actually going to change so we can change the hue, we can change the lightness and the hue, we can change the hue and the saturation and we can change all three at the same time as well. I'm going to set this back to hue. We can also change how it's actually going to alter the colors. By making the change by set to transform into color, what it's trying to do is actually replace the existing color whilst keeping the highlights and the shadows that you can see, rather than as opposed to setting to color, which will just replace all of the colors without keeping any of these details. So it makes it a lot smoother in actually trying to replace the colors in your footage. If I change it to set to, actually I'll leave that as that, hue and lightness. If I go back to set to color, you can see it turns into a block red. If I change the change by to transforming to color, you can see it keeps some of that gradient in the actual scene. So again, it's about choosing the settings that work best for you. I'm just gonna go back to hue and setting to color. Next, we've got the tolerance levels. And again, very similar to the change color effect where it says matching tolerance. The tolerance levels in the change the color effect is the colors that are similar in the hue of what we've selected here. So if I increase this, it will affect more of the colors that are similar in my shot. And if I reduce this, it will select less of them. We've also got lightness. So again, it's affecting certain pixels that are brighter or darker. And finally, we've got saturation. So again, going back to the change color, it has very similar effects. They're just named slightly different or fall under a different category. And of course, we've got the softness option as well. Now, rather, having, rather than having a drop-down view box that shows us our correction mask, we've got a little tick box here that shows us as well. So this does exactly the same thing as it does in the change color. It's just a tick box rather than a drop-down menu. So let's have a look at this in effect and where you can use this. Here I've got some footage of three men at a zebra crossing. If I run preview through this, you can see that the footage is moving, the people are moving, and it's a very simplistic shot. How I've used these effects is to actually change the color of the man on the left's tie to purple. Now, these are working, not just working on the road. The change color and change to color effects do work fairly well on their own, but combining them with something like a mask, for example, you can actually refine where exactly these are affecting your image. 
if I turn this off. So let's have a look at these effects and what they are doing. So I've selected the colour. If I turn this off for one second, you can see his tie was originally yellow. I've selected my colour and adjusted the hue to the purple colour, which we can see here. I've also slightly adjusted the light transform. If I continue to change this, I can make it brighter or I can make it darker. And I can even change the saturation to turn it into a gray image or make it a lot more vibrant as well. I'm gonna leave that set to zero because I don't want to affect the shadows underneath this collar. Then we've got the match tolerance. So this is allowing me to choose which um, colors of yellow that it's going to be affecting so by reducing this it will only affect a certain amount which we can see here that it, you can see that it's retaining some of the yellow so I've increased the tolerance to include those pixels in my selection I've also adjusted the softness so that we don't get this harsh banding this footage is very very compressed so we want to try and avoid any harsh banding that gives away the effect. So by increasing the, the softness, that helps us do that. Let's have a look at the color correction mask. And I'm actually just going to delete my mask for one second. And you can see which pixels this is affecting. It's affecting quite a lot of the scene. So it doesn't just affect the area that you've chosen. It affects every color that matches that color in your scene. So that's why I've used the mask to just crop out just the area that I want it to affect. You can achieve a similar look to this using the change the color effect as well. If I turn this on and let me just uncheck this. I've changed it to red this time. I've selected the color of the tie and then chosen the red color that I want to change it to. I've changed it um, going off the hue and changed by transforming to color. I found that this gave me the smoothest result in doing this effect. If I go into set into color, you can see that you're getting a lot more um, of the pixels being affected on his jacket. So by setting it to transform color, it makes it a little bit smoother. I've also adjusted the hue so that it includes less of these pixels, like so. I've adjusted the lightness, so again it affects brighter areas of his tie. And I've left the saturation to default, and I've also increased the softness as well, just to try and again blend away some of these extra pixels that have been affected. Okay, here we've got the correction mat turned on, and you can see how this is affecting the actual area that I've selected it's actually a lot more blocky than what we got with the change color effect. So for this effect, I would go with the change color, but for other items or other examples, I may use the change to color effect. So it's just about how you use these all together. Then I've simply gone in and masked the area that I've just wanted to affect and animated this so that it moves with him and it doesn't affect any areas. As you saw, it affected his face, so I needed to crop that area out. I've then obviously duplicated the footage with no effect so that it fills in the rest of the area. Otherwise, we're only gonna see the area that we've cropped with the mask. The mask has a simple feather on it of eight pixels just to blend in quite nicely. And that's how you can achieve quite a nice effect. So let's have a playthrough of that. And it works very well. So these effects are really, really powerful depending on where you want to use them and how you use them in combination with a lot of other techniques. Uh, but they don't work so well on their own because they affect too much of the rest of the footage. So just be aware of the limitations of these, but you can get some really nice, great results on your footage with them. So if you'd like to view my website, my website is www.jack-gundy.com and here you can find out more information about me, you can find my Twitter feed, 
You can also view my reel as well as other videos that I provide including my tutorials and I've also got a blog as well that highlights what I've been working on so far, um, tips and tricks on using After Effects as well as filmmaking and production information on my project that I'm working on at the minute called Salvar. So that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you soon.